Good. All right. Nina, what's up? Good to How see you. How are we? Nina, what's up? So I, the first time you and I met, I don't know if you remember, it was like right after things started coming back together in terms of like after COVID. Yes. At Broadway Comedy Club. A great place. You remember that? A great place. Yeah. That was like yeah. right when I was like, no, I'm really going to do this. Oh, comedy wise? Yeah. Like I had been doing it, but not really. So what yeah. Were you, what were you doing before? I was just like kind of doing it as a hobby. Like I was like, I'm going to do shows when I can. When did you move here? 2019. Oh, so you moved here for comedy or for a job specifically? Um, and then you were going to get more My job was actually already remote. Um, and so I was like, I can be wherever. And I like want to try comedy. I had been acting too, but I mostly was just like, I love comedy. New York so much that I would have been so mad at myself if I didn't move here. So then moved here and the rest is history. Where or where'd you grow up? North Carolina. North Carolina. My grandmother, I call her grandmother because I have a grandma and a grand grandmother, thankfully. Amazing. But she's from Oxford, North Carolina. Are you familiar okay. with Oxford? Yes, yes, I know yeah? Oxford. Yeah. Okay, they have like red dirt there. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Like <laughs> I remember one time I went down there when I was like eleven years old and I brought back a bag of like orange red dirt. Yeah. It was mm -hmm. dope. Yeah, yeah, we've got a lot of dirt in North Carolina. We got, <laughs> we've got really all the things. That's one, yeah. that's one of our uh, Super history rural. lessons. Super yeah. rural. You went to high school and college there. Uh, yeah, I did. Yep. And Both so history. coming to New York initially, though, like what brought you here? Was it just like coming here on vacation or um, stuff like that? Saw kind Times of, Square. Yeah, my mom lived here for like ten years. So she's an artist, visual artist, and she had lived here for ten years. And so we just grew up kind of coming every once in a while. I went to theater camp once upon a time. So we stopped through. Where was that? I went to stage door, which is like upstate. Yeah. Uh huh. And I also, I would just like come in kind of every once in a while. My grandparents had a trip that they took all the 10 year olds on when we turned 10. So we came for that. I don't know. There was just like a magic about it. What's the major difference between North Carolina and New York? Besides the obvious ones, I'd say. <laughs> Let's see. There's, there's a lot. Uh -huh. Um, yeah, I mean, there's like the obvious ones of fresh air. It doesn't exist in New York. Um, <laughs> you know, I was walking today, like walking down seventh Avenue. I was like, Oh my, this is the longest amount of time I've spent in the sun, in the sun consistently. Like it, oh, I just had an nice. hour in yeah. between the enormous skyscrapers around. Cause you know, when you go like through the avenues or whatever, you just get a complete amount of shade. And then I check my weather app. It says 67 degrees. I walk outside. I'm like, it's 50 degrees. Mm -hmm. And then I'm in the sun and then it's finally warm. I, genuinely think and i'm sure it already exists but there should be a weather app for the shade the shade and the sun because it is drastically you know, I, on the on the weather channel they have a subscription service i obviously i don't pay for it but it's 9.99 <laughs> and you can get like the full breakdown every 30 minutes really? like wherever in the country yeah the weather app has a subscription service okay with this, which i've is always hilarious. wondered like what are people paying for almost Iconic every life. application i think has a subscription model just to tack just, on just the extra case. stuff yeah you just know what i mean someone will do it that makes sense. But yeah, biggest difference is honestly, like, I mean, this is pretty obvious, but like the Southern hospitality, you just don't really get that in New York. What, uh, say an example. Give us an example of I mean, what you'd see York, maybe down there. So in North Carolina, everyone waves at everyone. And so if it's you not just like the nod, the head no, nod. it's like a genuine, like, I hope you are going to have the greatest life ever wave. Do you, you know? think that's maybe because there's really not a lot of walking going on in North Carolina? No, it's when people are on walks. They're all walking around. They got babies in this role. I mean, it's like so oh, wholesome. Really? Okay. Yeah. People are always walking and, um, but yeah, people wave a lot more, which is funny because then <laughs> after moving here for a couple of years, it like freaks me out when I go down in North Carolina, I'm like, right. does that person know me? And then I'm like, wait, do they know me? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but down there, they it's just like, it's not even a head nod. It's a full wave. Full wave. People will roll down the car window and wave. Oh, wow. That's yeah. nice. Yeah, so uh, Southern hospitality, you don't find people in New York to be as warming? I, I honestly think after COVID, people have been much nicer um, because I feel like everyone in New York actually wants to be here now people needed a little bit of a break i'd say yeah. from people and then understood that seeing other people is a privilege maybe yeah than yeah. spending all that time in your apartment so moving here in 2019 how much time did you have living everyday life before covid shut things down and did you move home um yes yeah, so i was here for about seven months 
and then moved home. Really was like just going home for the weekend because I had a wedding to go to. This so is like, like March 13th, 2020, you had a wedding? Yeah. And so my dad actually was in New York and he was one of those people that got the, got the text that, you know, my friend of a friend whose uncle is in the government says that they're going to shut all the borders to New York city. Yeah. We heard this. And too. I was like, I should go now. Uh -huh. And but you had a wedding anyway. You had an Yeah. Excuse. I was supposed to go to Key West. Um, so I was like, this is going to be great. Um, family wedding. And so all I had were like wedding clothes. That's all I packed like bathing suits and wedding clothes. And Stay and I mean my fridge was stocked. I was like, oh, the second I get back, I'll be okay. You're I'll living be living by yourself. At the time. I was living by myself, and went home and didn't come back for like four months. So, <laughs> yep, that was good. I had to text my super and be like, I need you to go in and take everything out of the right, fridge. I was just gonna Don't even know what it's you like. Then. Leave windows open or something. Luckily, I hadn't left the window open, which I usually would have i left my window open when i i left for That's my dad's right. house in long island for like six weeks came back with like getting more clothes and i saw <laughs> i left my window open but luckily there were no birds or maybe there were some mosquitoes my dad actually was the had like a reunion for his swim team so uh -huh. we were all at this nyu swim meet like the day before everything shut down oh, yeah. it's like the worst place to be for covid oh like i was an, at like a conference area. like yeah. i mean I, I was doing i had been in europe like literally had just gotten back from Europe. My brother had been in the hospital. He's fine. But like I was in the hospital in Alabama. For COVID? Oh uh, no. Just like something Unrelated. like right before. And then, and first couple cases had been announced here. And so I was like truly everywhere that should have had COVID and yeah. I didn't get it. But it must've been nice to be in North Carolina during that particular nice. time. You can go outside and you have enough space for yourself. Yeah, it was definitely nice. And I'm best friends with my parents. So that was fun. My brother about wanted to kill us about two weeks in so yeah. he didn't love it how long how, or how much time did you end up spending at home before you came back to new york i was there until july and then came back so um, this is like three so, and a half four months yeah i drove my like high school car that my brother now drives i drove it up here and moved myself into a different apartment okay for people that are thinking about taking the jump and moving to New York, what would you say to make them feel more comfortable about New York? Is it really as scary and different as people think? No, I mean, there's definitely, I think moving anywhere, you know, like anywhere that you've never lived before, or you maybe don't know a lot of people or anything like that, it's gonna be kind of a culture shock. I definitely think there are more people that might yell at you here. Totally. <laughs> and so like Especially that. Especially if you're out of line. Yeah. So that can be a little scary. Um, but <laughs> I'm prepared to get yelled at. I'm one of those people that like cries at the drop of a hat if confronted. Okay. Like don't cry. I don't cry in the situations you should, but if someone like calls me out for not holding a door or something and says it in a really mean way, like I will cry. <laughs> Do you take the train? Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. You're pretty acclimated with the train. You know how to get around. Or yeah, it's pretty easy was, with your phone, right? Yeah, train's pretty easy with the phone. The, I still will, every once in a while, see a train that's just arriving and I'll sprint on thinking it's the right one. It's like, oh, right. It's tough because like yeah. you got the F, the M, the B, the D, and they're all orange. Mm -hmm. You like didn't, don't know which one. And then also the A train, the C train, blue, yep. yellow. It's tough sometimes oh, with those colors and, then, and numbers. And then there's like the, uh, the L train. I thought it was... Gray, gray meant like out of service. So for like two years, I was like, damn, it's still out of service. <laughs> Until recently? Oh, pretty recently. Because well, they said that they were going to close it down for a long time at, yeah. at one point. Is I that what you were referring to? Oh, no. I just thought it was out of service because the line is gray. And I was like, oh, yeah. Just because of the gray. color? I was like, gray. Gray must does be seem like an out of service <laughs> type of color, like between black and brown and white. Yeah. yeah that potentially. Was, that was not a great moment. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody from your high school move here with you? Or you um, just moved here alone, solo? Uh, I actually know a decent amount of people from North Carolina that live up here. Um, and so I would say I like had a, a decent amount of friends when I moved. And still, still most of them are here. But I've also made a ton of friends just, I mean, comedy, obviously, but then a lot of my friends that are some of my best friends I didn't know until I moved here.
So this coming Thursday, went today, the episode is out. It's your birthday today? I just saw your story. Oh, yeah, well, so my birthday's Friday. Okay, but... so tomorrow as we're releasing yes, this. Yes, Okay, tomorrow. nice. And you have a birthday show? I have a birthday show. So talk about the show that you put together. Yeah. Buy me dinner first, correct? Yes, buy Very me dinner nice. first. I love that name. <laughs> yeah, it was like, the saddest part is I came up with it because I had texted a friend being like, I was just so annoyed that he didn't buy me dinner first. And then and I was, she was like, like, that's a perfect name. Oh. <laughs> Wait, so talk about, yeah, talk about the show. And then also talk about this date where he didn't buy you dinner first. What? I know. Shocking. Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> it's, so basically I wanted to create a comedy show that was just slightly different. I was like, I don't have the network necessarily to put on just a regular comedy show and have it sell out every single time. So I combined my love of like event planning and food basically to also support musicians and comedy. So it's three course meal, unlimited drinks, there's live jazz or some type of music and then comedy at the end. So the goal was really to mainly work with like local restaurants. I wanted to be able to uplift local restaurants I wanted to spotlight artists that maybe weren't like on tour. You know, they're really talented. I mean, there's so many talented people. Yeah, in especially, yeah, yeah, being in New York. Um, and then also just run a cool comedy show. So it's been great. But that's what's today. And then the name of the show? Oh, yes, the name. So any female listening has probably been like, gosh, I wish you would just buy me dinner first because there's every girl goes through the moment when they're out and there's a guy that's really cute that you want to go home with. And you're like, ah, oh, but like, it'd be, it'd be nice if you would just buy me dinner first. The guy should be paying on the first date no matter what. Yes. I think if the guy asks the girl to dinner, he's yeah. definitely entitled to. For sure. But what if the girl asked the guy? Okay. So I see it both ways. I also think a first date should not be food. Um, Agreed. What do you think, think it should be drinks? Yeah. Okay. Or, or coffee, coffee or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Um, but yeah, I think that, here's my thing. I'm all about like, I think male and female are equal, all that stuff. But I just think for the first date, unless the girl really was like, I'm taking, like, and it's so power stance, which like, hell yeah, for that girl. She's also probably the girl that would want to pay. Like, I'm very strong and confident, but like on the first date, I get a little annoyed if a guy's like, Let's split it. <laughs> well, let me ask you this, though. If the guy is like, oh, I got it. Or you both, okay, the check comes. You both reach into your bag. Yeah. You know, obviously you reach into your yes, bag. Yes, You're yes. like, no, I got it. You go, are you sure? To yeah. me, you say, are you sure? And I'm like, oh, no. Okay, let's split it. That's not my fault okay, if you no, say, I are agree. you sure? No, 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 I totally agree with that. I had this discussion <laughs> with my father because I was like, what am I doing wrong? And my dad was Why, like- Why, because you've been splitting a lot recently with guys? I had just been splitting a lot or like, you know, and you like I talked- You awkwardly talk, would pay. You'd be like, no, I insist. And he's like, all right. And he's like a, a banker with bazillions of dollars. And I'm like, I make $10 <laughs> a show. <laughs> like, please, for the love of God, why? And, well, she said she wanted to pay. Yeah, I'm like, PSA, like, I don't make a lot of money so with- So what does your dad comedy. say? So he said, you just need to stop offering he was like it's not rude like he was like you can still do the reach if you're uncomfortable and he was like but just say thank you like just be grateful just say thank you i think the reach is super important but yeah it is kind of awkward because the guy and the girl like there's no set it should this is the way it's going to be happening you know yeah. it's kind of like a oh she kind of knows that i'm gonna pay but then yeah. if you reach and then I don't know. It's it, sometimes it's a little bit difficult to yeah. pin that down I, I it's definitely difficult but also if the first date is probably not going to be the most expensive thing ever. I will say I've had guy friends be like, well, we can't figure out what the right thing to do is now because like some girls do adamantly like want to split it. But I personally just think that those girls will make that known. And I am not one of those girls. So how should it go? Ideally? I think, I think drinks, right? First drinks, date. drinks or coffee or whatever. And I think when the, ch I think the smoothest thing is when a guy just like immediately take, like before there's even a second is just like, boom. I'm like, that was so impressive. Do you know how easy that is? <laughs> so as soon as the, as soon as the checks hit the table, grab he just it. Like, just oh, grab I it. got it. Look at the check. You got to look at the bill. I don't yeah. understand why girls sometimes like, oh my God, it, he gave me the ick. He looked at the bill. We're checking to see if everything's oh. right on the thing. <laughs> yeah, no, right? I'm, like, I'm the kind of person that I'm like, I'm sorry. I didn't realize that the bread wasn't complimentary. So right. Um, see, exactly. So yeah. two drinks, what, or maybe it's, you get two drinks. I get two drinks, whatever. It's a good first date or coffee also. Like yeah, I haven't been great. drinking as much recently and I also haven't been on a date. I 
don't think this entire year. Maybe like not an actual formal date. Maybe I've like gotten a coffee with someone, yeah. but like a real date like that. I think coffee is probably the best first date. Yeah, I think coffee is great. I think it like definitely scares a lot of people to be like, yeah, it this scares is... me. Yeah. <laughs> Just even saying that out loud. I'm like, oh yeah, coffee date. But no, I don't I'm think like, in coffee general. Coffee date's so great, but I'm also like, I'll probably say no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because on the dating apps, it's like, as soon as you start talking, if like you don't get right to the date, I feel like it loses a lot oh, of steam. Mm -hmm. And that's where I think I lose um, a good amount of where I would potentially go on a date mm -hmm. to actually succeeding and going on the date. Yeah, I also just like, there's something about it being nighttime. I also, I don't care if someone doesn't drink and we're out for drinks, like that doesn't bother me. Um, also, I feel like, especially in New York, there's like a bazillion different things you can order. That but if he, but if he's out for like on a drink date with you and offered it, wouldn't it be weird if he's not drinking? He's like, oh, let's meet for drinks. And then you're all of a sudden not drinking. He's like, oh, by the way, I don't drink. Wouldn't you have preferred that that was a coffee date? Or not is it like, it's like the day and night? It's a little bit. I think day and night. I also think weird. it depends on like the confidence level of the individual. Because like some people will be like upset to drink by themselves. I'm like, I don't even care. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I do this all the time. Um, but I also think if that person's confident enough to come and sit knowing that they may not drink or whatever. Like, I think that's fine, but I don't know. I can see it kind of both ways, but I also just don't think I would, there would be a good moment before to be like, Oh, by the way, I'm not, I've had someone come and sit and be like, I'm not drinking today. And I'm like, okay, that's fine. I mean, it was a horrible date, but, <laughs> oh, but I mean, that <laughs> but drink could have been, yeah, but that drink could have been a coffee date potentially. True. I just feel like coffee days are hard to schedule. Like day wise, mm -hmm. you mean like nighttime and whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I mean, we'll see what happens like with my next date. I don't know. But dating in general, I think it's, it gets me anxious because I'm like, is this a waste of time? Am I going to wake up hungover the next day? Yeah. End up spending a hundred dollars, which in which I didn't want to spend. Yeah. Yep. Sometimes it's, like that. Yeah. It's definitely not. But also to defend the girls here, like you got to think of the money that goes into the prep. That's true. That's, Us guys never think about that. Like, that's my thing is I'm like, do you know how expensive getting my haircut is? Oh, okay. Well, so haircut dumb. for the date? Now you wouldn't no, go to like, like dry still, bar or something? But if I like, it, if I do out. like a payment plan of a haircut, <laughs> it's still <laughs> you charge the so guy. expensive. Right. You that's know, true. so I'm just like that. And I'm like, just the freaking stuff I put on my face at night, you know? The serums. Or yeah, the serums. exactly. Would you ever go on a smoking weed date? I don't think that's something people ever talk about or do. I personally wouldn't. Too many variables that would make it There's awkward. There's a lot of variables. Also, I'm like, I don't want to be the girl mouth. that's like, where'd you get your weed? You know, like that seems like an invasive question. What do you mean? Just uh, out of curiosity or you're like worried about where I well, potentially get my weed? I mean, I'm worried about meeting some, a stranger in public. Like, you know, that's you're worried of, about what type of weed he would have. Maybe that's an interesting thing to be worried about. But then again, I mean, so you're smoking through. weed with someone you don't know. Exactly. Also, like, where are we going to be doing this alone? Oh my God. Yeah. I'm imagine you guys get tickets like in trouble. Oh yeah. Doing it alone. Yeah. Maybe like you can smoke, have water and then go to a movie. That would be nice. <laughs> That's nice. But like you the need the factor. water in the mixes. Otherwise you like both have your mouths super dry and then yeah, it's like awkward. It. Like you have to pretend you're super comfortable. Yeah. And in actuality you need water. Yeah, what if you have a bad high and you're sitting there like paranoid? You see, yeah. I'm also going through the girl mindset of yeah, like, I think you killer. both need to be very comfortable in smoking weed. Like you both have to know yeah, yeah, that yeah. like you're stoners or whatever. Maybe a walk on the West side highway or yeah, on the lovely. FDR drive. You ever done that? I've done a walk date. How was that? It was pretty bad. I've never, pretty what, bad. really, I've never done a walk date and I've always like, fantasized about it. Me too. It's free. I was like, this is great. I can wear workout clothes. I live in workout clothes. I was like, <laughs> this is amazing. This is on the West Side Highway or after our drive? Um, West Side Highway. I was like, we met in meatpacking and then we w walked on the West Side Highway and then we stopped and had coffee. I mean, it's like- Whose the, idea was this, by the way, him or you? I think it was kind of mutual. We were like, oh, you know what it was? Uh, my schedule was so insane that I was like, I have Sunday at 11 a.m. <laughs> Literally, that's how my schedule plays out. And we went on a walking date. I was quite comfortable. Um, there's, there's a couple of things. First of all, it's hard to really focus on them while you're walking because you want to like look and make eye contact, but you can't really because you're also trying to not like run into yeah. people. Um, so that's an issue. I'm also really short, 
which is fine, like sitting at a table or something. Yeah. But so I was like, like my neck was strained. <laughs> really? Because I was just trying to be attentive. Um, other issues, I'm a fast walker. He wasn't a fast walker though? Not good enough. Really? And so I was like, I have the ick. One of the crazier things is my last ex-girlfriend, she walked really slow and occasionally it really got to me to the point where I'd be like 10 no, steps ahead and i just like look behind. I'd be like, really? Like, it let's go. It makes me mad. He was so, but he was that much taller than you and still a slow walker? Yeah, I, you, you, I sometimes feel like there is that opposite because like all he has to do is kick in a little bit to like be faster than everyone. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm always in overdrive. <laughs> oh my God, poor guy. How tall is he? He's probably 6'5". Six 6'5", five. Six five and you're walking faster than him? Yeah, I walk really fast. All right. Yeah. Well, I'll have to see you on the street in action. <laughs> you see a flash. Wait, so by. walking though, I feel like, I don't know. I feel like that could be such a good date, but you're right. Like just having to focus on someone, try and make the conversation good. Yeah. You might get distracted. I feel like a walking date could be good. Like in Central Park, if you stop and do like a picnic. But then again, I don't think that's a first date. Like, I think that's also kind of a lot because there's a lot of variables there. Like, where do you be? Like, I, you know, these are things that I think about. So walking date has potential, but long, I don't think long, first date. How long was this uh, first date walking date though that we were just talking about? All in, oh my gosh, probably two hours. Ooh, but we weren't walking walked, the whole time. We stopped and had coffee. Right. And maybe you walk too far though to get back to your meeting spot potentially. Yeah, there's just like a lot of things that, it was a great idea and it was a lovely day. What's the ideal first date then? I think ideal first date is just like, I actually was talking to a guy friend about this. I think doing something unique that's not like insane. Um, he just had the idea of doing like a sushi making class is kind of more of a second date. But I was like, that's cool and fun and like can be a funny experience. Um, I mean, I would never want to go to a comedy show on a first date, but... I feel like that a can be, that. yeah, I feel like that can be good. Um, well, do you see, a, a, don't mean to interrupt, but do you see a lot of first dates at your type of show where there's dinner and the drinks and the whole nine kind of involved? None of them are first dates. Like most people coming are like all the couples that are there have generally dated or dating at least on. Cause it's an expensive. Yeah. Outing, like it's it expensive. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would say first date, like doing something cool is awesome, but also just like a cool drink spot. It doesn't have to be anything it's special. It's tough to find though. I it know. is. It's tough to find. People need to like put together a list or refer to uh, some of their other friends that have been to a place. Yeah. I find like, cause there's so many options yeah, there's so and many. the ones that you typically want to go to might not have reservations at that particular night. So yeah. it's like kind of tough to, you got to gauge everything together. Yeah. It seemed like, I mean, 30, 40 years ago when our parents were probably first starting to date, it was super easy because you met the guy or girl walking on the street. You bumped into them at the grocery store yeah. or they go the to the dream. same college as you. <laughs> and then you're like, all right, well, let's go. I don't know. Well, I don't even know how it would work back in the day, but way easier than now. <laughs> was, way too many but distractions. It was so good. Yeah. But also like, I also feel like there were people that were for sure like had multiple relationships yeah way easier way to fly easier. back then oh yeah and because it's like you'd have one in every state that's what my dad always said he's like and my parents are happily dad. married um but he was like you can have one in every state they would have no idea so you're on the dating apps i am quite literally I think and you don't and you don't <laughs> mind them like you find success on them i really don't i really dislike them i, I think, quite at this dislike point. them um I had success in the beginning. I was like, I'm just going to go on dates. Like worst case scenario, their content. Once like, you got to, <laughs> once you got to New York, you mean? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I had a boyfriend up until like 2020, end of 2020. So then, like 2021, I was like, I'm going to get on the apps and like well, really was that try. A, was that a long distance relationship, or he lived in New York? Um, it was long distance, but we were both in North Carolina during COVID and all that. So, um, great guy. Hope he's doing well. Um, <laughs> That's my script. Um, <laughs> but but no, I finally was like, okay, I'm just going to like try. Worst case scenario, I get content out of this. Best case scenario, I like meet the love of my life. I mean, I have friends and I'm going to their weddings and they met on Hinge. So uh -huh. I've heard that too. Um, and Bumble, not so much. I've heard a lot Hinge. Though. Okay. I have better luck on Bumble, which is interesting. Um, 
I honestly am kind of on a hiatus from dating apps right now because I'm just annoyed. Like, I'm just like, Ugh, this is so not worth it. Mostly because I feel like there'd be all these matches and then they just sit there totally. and I just watch them expire. Yeah, totally. Um, but yeah, I'm on them, but I can't really say that I'm super active right now just because I'm kind of like, eh. Anything organic? It's tougher. Yeah, I, there's been like a handful of people maybe that I've like met out, but also I feel like I'm just busy a lot. Like I'm not necessarily out at bars. It's like I'm maybe used to be, I have a lot of weddings right now. Um, and everyone at the weddings in the South are engaged. Me too. So. Are you, you're going back to North Carolina though? Mm -hmm. A good amount. Mm -hmm. Do you ever do comedy down there? Yeah, I've done it a couple times just like when I'm in town. I mean, I, I'm in a wedding in a couple of weeks and I'll be like going and performing there too, which will be fun. But are the open mics down there, like it, when I have asked comics before about like Georgia, they say the open mics are fully shows where they would just have 70 people there. And while they would have maybe 20 comics going up, it does feel like a show. Cause that's like the main thing to do in your town. Did you grow up in a small town? Um, no, I grew up in Raleigh. So like a oh. decent amount of people, there's definitely still the weird open mics and they're like even weirder. <laughs> um, the New York, you mean? Oh yeah. Um, but there's also, yeah, because I think there's just not as much comedy going on. So sometimes mics are just more of like shows kind of thing. But there's definitely still the good old mic with no audience. <laughs> so. In North Carolina? Too. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I went to, went to a wedding like three and a half years ago and spent some time in downtown Raleigh. I'm now right. remembering this. Yes. And we were riding around that bird, the oh, yeah, scooter yeah. for like so an hour good. and a half. So fun. I yeah. wish they had it in New York, but I can understand it's maybe a little bit dangerous, especially since people get yeah. hit by on the city bike all the time. Yeah. It seems like a nightmare. So yeah. you're a huge walker or you take the subway a lot? Big city walker. bike. I used to like the city bike and now I'm just like, I had a couple of drunk city bike moments where I'm no like, way. I'm no way, like, no helmet too. Yeah, of course not. No, like, I mean, don't, don't didn't bring it with you me just to the bring bar. your helmet. Can you imagine like biking at <laughs> home on a city bike drunk with your helmet on? You're like, all right, well, at least I got my helmet People on. People will be like, I mean, that's at least she's thing. safe. Yeah, like, that's true. No, but I, it's not, nothing ever happened, but I just looked back. Like I would wake up with like the city bike like, notification I <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> <laughs> you rode 3.3 miles. Yeah, and I'm like, oh, but I'll do it. If it's like, I'll city bike, for example, if I'm like, okay, it's probably too sketchy for me to walk, but it feels really nice out. Like I'll city bike. Okay, electric or regular? No, I'm terrified of the electric ones. Never ridden one. I don't know if I've ever ridden a city bike thinking back on, I've never had a membership. That's for sure. Oh, I've definitely never had a membership. Yeah, no, but I do love the subway. Um, I mean, love is maybe a strong word, but I love the convenience of it. And, but I'm, I, I'll walk if it's under an hour. Me too. I kind of have that same rule. Mm -hmm. I'd say under an hour is probably right. Yeah. Yellow cab or Uber? That's a good from, city question. From comedy shows, yellow cab every single time because I just usually am near McDougal. And so I'll just pop off and be like right there, easy yeah. to get a cab. Yeah. If I am in Brooklyn in Uber, because I, don't, I, I don't know why, but getting a Brooklyn taxi kind of stresses me out. Mm -hmm. I just feel like they don't like me. I feel like they see that I'm definitely living in Manhattan and they're like, we're not picking you up. I think when I have more time to plan it, like in my apartment, I'll call an Uber. But I mean, for the most part, I'm walking everywhere. I yeah. rarely call an Uber. Maybe when I'm coming back from the airport or something, I'll be in a yeah. yellow taxi. But besides that, I'm walking all over the place. Yeah, I'd rather just walk. But I do like the like sex in the city glam moment of like calling a taxi like bleaker street. Yeah. I mean, I could literally be splashed for the puddle, but if I'm calling <laughs> a taxi, I'll feel cool. Do you walk a lot at home? Yeah. It was a big driving place. Definitely big driving. Um, I mean, I saw a tweet the other day that was about like New Yorkers mapping something in another state and it says a 15 minute walk and it ends up taking them on the highway to walk. Oh yeah. And I I'm actually like, had that moment in downtown Raleigh. That's so funny. Like yeah. having to cross the, whatever the claws way, whatever it's called, um, from a hotel, stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, so I definitely walked a lot. In college, claws it was like a walking town, but. Um, what college you go to? UNC Chapel Hill. Oh, wow, yeah, go Michael Jordan. Yes, so Michael you, Jordan. I'm sure you had to have really good grades to get into there, because probably everybody wanted to go to UNC Chapel Hill, Yeah, right? it definitely was like for a public school, like pretty, really hard to get into. Definitely hard if you were out of state. Um, shout out to all those people, but. Um, yeah, it was pretty, very competitive. What um, was your experience like in college? 
It was amazing. I mean, I a theater major stuff like that. Um, I was a drama major and a physics major. Whoa, it's double major. Yep. Cool. Um, clearly doing a lot with physics. Um, really good. Walking, have that. <laughs> gravity, and stuff. Yeah, gravity. You know, all the things. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I always win trivia when it randomly is like, what is you know the theory of relativity? Right. As a joke. Is that Einstein? Um. There's like a couple different people involved. Okay. Yeah. E equals MC squared is a theory of rel. No. Is it? What's it's e like equals energy. MC? It equals. Equals. Whatever think, you guys can Google. Yeah, We're yeah. popping it up right here. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, I don't know. Um, but no. So I mean, I loved physics. I thought it was cool. Um, and but yeah, I mean, I was I was in a sorority. Did did that? What sorority? Thing. I was in Kappa Delta. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, which was great. And I mean, it was amazing. I was there for a national championship win in basketball. Oh, cool. So that was really fun. I went to UConn. So for my freshman year in 2010 and my senior year in 2014, we won the men's national championship, but go. the women won a hundred straight games when I was there at oh one my point, gosh. the UConn women. I don't yeah, know if yeah, you remember yeah. how oh, good yeah. they were. They were insane at basketball. Yeah, no, that's awesome. Yeah. We had amazing sports. So that was super fun. Um, and like, I grew up on sec football, so it wasn't exactly that, but our basketball was amazing. And, um, it was like just a beautiful place, but yeah, it was a fun experience. I mean, I, I really wasn't like a crazy partier. I would go to all the parties, but I was like mom of the friend group. So that was Holding kind of everyone's hair back. I, it's so, so funny. That is right where I would draw the line. I, cannot stand throw up <laughs> like i will get them into the bathroom and be like take care of yourself, yeah, yourself. <laughs> blood and throw up or just throw up blood's fine i don't really care about that like if you could cut your knee or whatever that's totally yeah, okay that's fine um which i definitely did a fair share of times sure. just like falling yeah. um but yeah throw up um, mm, nope <laughs> why'd you grow up on sec football uh my dad's from georgia and so we're huge georgia fans georgia bulldogs yeah go dogs what was your favorite college memory oh gosh Favorite. Anything that propelled you to be like, I'm moving to New York and starting a fancy comedy show. Oh gosh. Um, I mean, honestly, my first comedy show ever was when I was in college. So, which is hilarious because I was so bad and I fully did a half hour. A half hour? <laughs> I just was like, here we was go. Was it in front of your sorority or something? No, I literally, it was at like, uh, you know, the pit in New York. They have a pit in Chapel Hill. And it's the same owner, all that kind of really? stuff. Really? Mm -hmm. The guy it went to UNC. Be, he, yeah, I was just going to say. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, it's like, my. Because they had one on between Park and Lex, which closed down. Mm -hmm. And now they have the one over here on yep. the 27th and something. 7th or something. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, no, I was just like, oh, yeah, everybody come. And I, the only reason I was okay at comedy early days was because I loved being on stage like i was so comfortable that people were like the writing is horrible but you think it's Impressive. so funny and like you're having such a good time that it worked um so that's a pretty good memory i would say the national championship's pretty good how many people were at that show though um it was like 60 70 people which is hilarious. I wish I could get that That's now. That's <laughs> crazy. Wait, all from your school? Or it was um, just people from the town of Chapel Hill? Both. It was kind of a mix because they would always promote whatever. And, um, you know, I wasn't trying to make any money off of it. I was just like, I just want to try. Yeah. And, um, I mean, I had a great time. I absolutely never want to see the video of it ever in my life. They have a video of it? I'm sure it exists. Oh, my God. Amazing. Do you meet any basketball players down there? Yep. I um, was good friends with a couple of them. Theo Pinson, who's like definitely known as one of the funniest ones. And I were in a like 10 person acting class together, which was hilarious. Um, so like good friends with him. And then the rest of them, we they were kind of like local celebrities. So they would show sure. up and it would just be that like- That was like at UConn too, the football yeah. and the basketball players. Yeah. Walk like, into class 10 minutes late, six foot nine, be like, oh yeah, dude, we didn't see you walk in late. Yeah, it's like, like, we'll see, we enormous. were going through the scandal, like academic scandal. So we, they oh, were very- right. Every, like after the national championship, after we won, we had class. Oh, wow. Oh. You ever see Michael Jordan on campus? Um, A couple of times. Really? I was there when he did the like ceiling is the roof situation. He said that at the Duke game. Um, <laughs> the ceiling is the roof. Mm -hmm. I vaguely remember that. Oh yeah. I remember I was sitting, I was the there. Roof. And oh, I, yeah, he said he was like in center court and he said yeah, that, right? He was like, the ceiling is the roof. And it was one of those, my dad and I looked at each other and we both were like, wait, wait, what? 
and everyone was kind of just like, yeah, uh, it's now branded everywhere. Um, and he's from Wilmington, North Carolina. So I actually see him more in Wilmington when I'm there, like visiting friends. That's right next to Oxford, right? Yeah, it's really close. Okay, I think some of my extended family yep. lives there. There's, I mean, there doesn't seem like there's a lot to do right next to the campus of Chapel Hill. Am I wrong? Yeah, no. I mean, Duke and Chapel Hill are very close. Yeah. Um. So that's like the closest next thing. And then Raleigh is pretty close. But like right around Chapel Hill... Were you maybe going to go to Duke? Like, what was the oh, price God, no. difference for you, though? Um, in terms of, like, going to the in-state state school yeah. versus a private school like Duke? Huge difference. Um, like $50,000 per year in difference? Yeah, yeah. like, like wow. private school was way, way, way more. Also, Duke is, like, not a lot of people from North Carolina. Um, it's a lot of people from the North. <laughs> um, so, you know, I hate Duke, like, a lot. Oh, wow. Yeah, why, is still it just do. because of the, the school rivalry? Or why do you guys hate each other so much? It's the, like, it's The Tar Heels and the, what, the Blue Devils. And the Blue Devils. Yeah, yeah it's pretty deeply rooted. Why, though? I see, I know Ugh. it's because of the sports teams. You guys have animosity towards each other. They're also just, like, pompous. I was about to say, kids. I was about to say terrible people. And then uh -huh. I was like, that seems <laughs> That's a aggressive. Yeah. I was like, I do have a couple friends that went there. Uh -huh. um, they're just like not friendly. And they, the reason the rivalry is also really big is because academically it's very similar. And so, and there's like a scholarship that you spend half your time at Duke and half your time at Carolina. Oh my God. I've heard about the scholarship. Mm -hmm. Talk about it a little. Yeah. So a lot of times I think there's like maybe 10 a class or something like that. And it could be less, but it's a really, really prestigious scholarship. And you spend two years at one and then you switch and do two years at the other. So it's like freshman and sophomore and then junior, senior. Yeah. And what always happens is the first two years, someone becomes like married to their school. And they're like, I could never, ever go to this other horrible Such place. Such a crazy, but you decide which one you start at and then which one you finish at? I'm not sure how that works. I know there was one girl that she was playing for UNC field hockey, but her last two years were at Duke academically. Oh, and it works for for sports like that too? Yeah, it's like crazy town. But I I think that generally the majority consensus has been like UNC is more fun, but has the academics to go along with it. Um, but yeah, no, the, the rivalry is runs like so deep, like so deep. I mean, they're teachers that full blown hate Duke. And we'll talk about it. And these are people with like PhDs, <laughs> but it's just, I mean, there's so many, I think because they are so close by, that's part of it. Yeah, but um, yeah, no, we have, I mean, there would be girls that would go over to Duke's campus and like try and get the basketball guys to like go out and like get them like yeah, drunk, drunk and like whatever yeah oh yeah i mean girls would we have i have videos still of duke basketball players being like the carolina girls are prettier like blah blah blah, blah. that's funny but yeah i hate that school do you go to, <laughs> do you go to a lot of basketball games um the ones i could get into what um, about yeah i saw some kids would like have to camp out outside of the stadium yeah they especially at duke they will really like like duke camp. versus north carolina yeah whereas like both, it's like a lottery system. I was gonna ask. Um, yeah, because they but, had that at UConn. Like you could mm -hmm. put it in, and then once if you did win the lottery, then you had the opportunity to buy face value uh, season tickets. Yeah, so it was like there were a couple different ways you could. I mean, there was always like you would enter the lottery every game, and then if you ended up not being able to go, you would pass it off, and then oh, for, it's it's for every game, for every game. But then for the Duke game, you entered it in. Priority went to seniors that had not been to a Duke. They guarantee that you will go to a Duke Carolina game at one time in your four years. If you apply. Um, yeah, thing. if you apply for the lottery. And so everyone applied and there would always be like the random freshman that would get it and sell his lottery ticket <laughs> to a senior. Yeah. Which was just so This happened at UConn, but you would get the lottery for the whole season. Like That's you nice. can buy season tickets. It wouldn't be just for that game. Yeah, we have a very, I mean, we're kind of made fun of it for like our alumni section that looks very like country club. Um, so we don't really get a lot of student stuff. Okay. <laughs> Just at least for basketball because those people pay so much money. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, but I mean, it's still an amazing environment. That That's always the thing is people are like, it can't be that amazing of a basketball. No, it and looks like, no, insane. Even on ESPN, it looks insane. Yeah, well, I mean, awesome. that's where, that's the only reason I know about it was because of, you know, watching it on TV and stuff like that. Have yeah. you been back since you graduated? Um, I've been back like 
two or three times. I've, there was a wedding that was like in that area that I went to last year. That was really fun. On center court or something. Um, Where do they have the wedding? Imagine? That'd be great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> there's a place like 10 minutes outside of Chapel Hill. That's this beautiful like farm. A Durham. Uh, it's no, it's like Pittsburgh, far. but uh, basically Durham. Like same, same difference. But so I've been back for that. And then like one football game. Nice. I need to go back to UConn soon. I imagine probably some uh, 10 or 15 year anniversary. It's just yeah. in the middle of nowhere for me, but I do still have a lot of friends from there and you still have a lot of friends that live yeah. in that area. A lot of people are in grad school. So they live kind of near there. And a couple of my friends that are married live in Raleigh. So are you going to be in New York the rest of your life? I don't know that I'll be here the rest of my life. Not necessarily meaning that I'm going to go back to the South which there's probably people that will hear this and cry hearing that. But mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I feel like I'll wake up in like however many years and just be like, I got to go. But I don't. Well, does that mean when you have a family or by yourself? Maybe. I mean, I'm for my mom. She just like a real bad blizzard hit. And she was like, I'm good at 10 years. She was like, that's it. That's all I needed. And yeah, so I feel like that could do it. But I don't know. I don't know that I would necessarily, I love the South, but I don't necessarily, I'm not trying to like run back yeah, there. You love New York too. Yeah. And everything going on here. Yeah. I love everything going on here. I love that most people I know here are single. It makes me feel a little bit better. Yeah, totally. <laughs> love that. Gotten an argument about that at a wedding this weekend. That was great. Um, yeah. I mean, I love the South, but I just like, it's, I like the fast pace. I like being able to walk. I like bodegas. Those nice. kind of things, you know? Cool. Nina, so before we get out of here, you have a show tonight, correct? Yes. yes. Your birthday tomorrow. Oh, yeah. What else do you have that's coming up towards uh, the end of 2022 that you're excited for? Oh, or gosh. stuff in the beginning of 2023 that you can shout out? And um, also shout out your Instagram. We're going to pop it up right here. Oh, yeah. So my Instagram is popping up right here uh, at Nina Barnett. And, you know, I attempt TikTok. So, you know, at Neens Barnett. My nickname is Neens. Love it. Um, but yeah, I mean, my show runs monthly. So definitely that. And yeah, I would just say, if you want to wish me a happy birthday, we can be friends. That's always exciting. Slide in the DMs. Yeah, slide and in my maybe DMs. maybe get coffee with you. Listen, my DMs are open. They're always <laughs> open. I check every request. Amazing. Um, but yeah, that's that's really it. I've got like a hundred weddings. So that's pretty much all my weekends coming up. All right. Cool. Yeah. Nina, thank you so much for coming yes. on the Ted Jones World Podcast. Guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Follow this girl. She's hilarious. And we'll see you guys on Monday. Peace. <laughs>